Today we'll be talking about a variety of ways that you can get out and serve and volunteer in the St. George, Utah area. Hi, I'm Shari Harris with Fathom Realty, and I spend a lot of time helping families and individuals relocate to the St. George, Utah area. If you have any questions about the area or are ready to start looking for your next home, don't hesitate to reach out to me. All my contact information is below. When moving to a new location, whether if this is something you're excited about and wanting to make the move or circumstances have just kind of forced this move, um, it's a stressful experience as well as um, it can be kind of lonely coming to a new place. And there's the grieving maybe of um, people and, and places that you loved. And so one way to really get out there and meet people is to volunteer in the community. And so today I'm going to go over some of those places you can do that. Um, studies have shown that um, volunteering, serving is so good for your mental and physical health, as well as it just helps improve the community and it empowers you to make a difference. So the first area I want to talk about where you can volunteer um, is Switchpoint. And Switchpoint is all over. They have so many things going on. I'm so impressed by them. Um, but this is if you want to help people who are struggling with, with poverty. So they have their homeless shelter, um, their food kitchen. They have a thrift store, um, a pet store. I think like a coffee truck. Maybe that even has a location now. Uh, a 24 seven daycare. And all of these things kind of help support the, the shelter, um, provide jobs, and there's just so many ways that you can volunteer and get involved, whether that's um, helping to serve food at the, at the soup kitchen, um, helping at the daycare with the kids, um, helping with marketing events and fundraising, uh, teaching life skills, helping people with using a computer, applying for jobs. Uh, you can donate things, you can help sort the donations. Um, so anyway, there's so many ways to get involved. Um, they do have like an email list that you can get on that will sometimes have things on there that they need as well as you can give them a call or go to the website. Um, I used to live in a neighborhood where one of the neighbors, rather than um, exchanging gifts at Christmas time with the neighbors, they encouraged everybody to take that money and um, buy stuff off the list of things that Switchpoint needed. And then they would have an appointed time to come by their home and uh, drop the donations off. Um, often they had some goodies and just a time to reconnect uh, with neighbors. And so that's one thing you can always do is put together some sort of donation drive to help them out. Another, um, if you're like wanting to focus on kind of the poverty, homelessness, uh, Youth Futures is another one. Uh, these are for uh, 12 to 17 year olds who are homeless. It's a very, uh, it's a temporary shelter, but they often need like towels and bedding, um, gift cards for like food uh, for the kids. So uh, that's one place that I've been involved with some food drives in the past. Um, also, I think they need volunteers sometimes for like outreach, following up with these youth and seeing how they're doing. Um, but usually it's best to just contact Youth Futures to see what they need at this time. This next one is super close to my heart. Um, so it's the Dove Center. This is the shelter for abused women and children. Um, when I was in college in Northern Utah, I did my internship at the shelter there and spent many years working there um, in the evenings. And so I saw, I saw how hard it is for these women and children, for these women to get a fresh start in life and, um, and I've seen it in my own um, family's life. And so um, I just have, they just have a big place in my heart. So at the Dev Center, they um, can use a lot of help with um, like the office stuff, answering phones, filing papers, uh, watching the children while the mothers are, um, like going to group therapy or working with their, their caseworker or whatever. So help with that, um, as well as donations um, for the running of the shelter. Um, they also have, it's called the Hospital Advocacy Response Team. Um, when I was in Northern Utah, it was referred to as the Rape Crisis Team, but it's a very similar thing where um, you respond to the hospital um, whenever there's like a sexual assault or domestic assault there. 
um, and you come to support and have resources to help them and uh, just be there for them. And so they're always needing people um, for this for this team. There's, I think it's a 40 hour training that you need to um, take in order to do that as well as like background checks and stuff. So, um, but that's one way that you can give back there. Um, I don't know all the details how they run it. When I used to do it, um, you were on call for like 24, 48 hours. Um, there was even pagers back then. I hope that doesn't date me, but um, now I'm sure they just call your cell phone <laughs> and let you know um, uh, when there's a call and you're needed. Another thing with the Dove Center that they can always use help with people who will go out in the community and educate about what they do as well as educate about um, the cycles of abuse and what that looks like, what the red flags are. Um, so sometimes you'll see volunteers I'm doing booths at community events or um, speaking at community events. And so if that's something that uh, you're educated or want to get educated and you like talking to people, um, that's another way that you can help them. And then donations drive, donation drives as well. If you look into um, what they're currently in need of at the time, uh, you can gather family and friends to um, get the stuff they're in need of. There's also the Washington County Children's Justice Center. Um, this is where they'll bring the children to um, do the interviews if they've been abused or a victim of a crime. They need a variety. Like, I was looking at their website. Um, they were like, do you have electricians, woodworkers, gardeners, carpenter, uh, writers, artists, uh, civic leader? I mean, anybody to kind of come and um, help with things, uh, with fixing things up around there, which I also think the shelter has asked for those things at times, and switch points. So you can use what you, you're you skilled in as well to um, help with those kind of like projects that come up so they don't have to hire an electrician, handyman, uh, those kind of things. Um, I know the Washington County Children's Justice Center, um, they have committees that you can join to help plan events. Um, sometimes I need items there donated and then just like yeah the maintaining of the facility um, and office support like filing typing making phone calls stuffing envelopes um, those kind of things helping with marketing and advertising and um, photographers for like their fundraisers and their community events I believe they opened a new location recently and so there was a lot going on with raising the money um, for that um, but it's a it's a safe place for children to come to um, and it has kind of a, a home feel to it. And so uh, sadly, it's something that every community needs to help kids through this because um, nowhere is free of all, you know, crimes. So uh, there's something you can help there, you can help children. Another is um, a court appointed uh, special advocate or it's your job to, vol the volunteers, they get to know the children. They're kind of the eyes and the ears of the guardian ad litem office and kind of get to you know know the child and their family and, and kind of have insights that really um, can help um, figure out like what's really going on here and what is in the best interest of this child. Um, so that's another thing with some training that you can get involved with. Now turning to maybe a more fun volunteer that doesn't weigh maybe so heavy on your heart um, is Tuacon, Tuacon Amphitheater. This is this beautiful natural amphitheater in the Red Rocks of Ivans, and they do Broadway shows and concerts here. Um, they also have an indoor theater, um, and here you can volunteer to, um, you know, scan tickets, uh, usher people to their seats, um, help people in the parking lot, um, uh, the crosswalk guard or whatever you call them. So you can help with those different things, um, and they have different benefits like. If you're there um, helping with a concert, then you can stay and watch the concert. Um, Broadway shows, as you're helping with those, you're earning like points and you can use those um, for tickets to come back and watch the show. So um, that's a fun way to get to see all the amazing events happening there. Um, and just kind of socialize, get to know people. It's, um, I mean, their website, um, just look or do a Google search for uh, to a con in, um, in Ivan's Utah and you should be able to find their website with all the volunteer stuff. Um, I'll also try to put a link below. All right, another would be, um, this applies to anywhere, but like 
volunteer at your kid's school, or if you don't have children, um, contact the schools and see how you can help. Um, I know they often need somebody to just sit there and read with children who are maybe struggling or homework help or um, kids are having a little bit of a hard time. So uh, that's one way to help as well as this is paid, but I often see the schools are in need of more substitutes. So if you like to spend time with kids, you know, maybe even just um, get on that list to be a substitute teacher. Um, I know it's not complete volunteer because you're paid, but the pay is not super high. Um, and uh, you can um, kind of slip in there and help the kids. Also, sometimes the schools uh, need help with like um, fundraisers they're doing. Um, you can get involved with the PTA or PTO, um, depending on what your school has there and um, helping with um, like concessions. If you've got like the older kids at the high school, helping with the concession stands, they often do fundraisers there um, off of the concessions. So I know um, when my daughter was going with her orchestra to Disneyland, that was a big thing to go volunteer in the concession stand during the football games and different athletic events to help pay for that trip. So uh, just kind of call your school and see like how, how can I best help and support if you don't have children. You can also offer to volunteer. Here we have all these like big races. You've probably heard me talk about in other videos. We have our triathlons and our marathons and bike races. And that is a great way to volunteer. Oh, and the senior, the senior games, senior Olympics. And so they're always needing volunteers to at the different um, spots around the route. So um, you can volunteer with any of these. And uh, it's so fun to get like front row seats to these great big events in the area. Um, the driving around town special with triathlon and marathon is gonna be all these detours, so you might as well just join it. Another is uh, volunteering at the hospital um, or like, so we have like a kind of a campus there with a bunch of medical buildings uh, around the hospital. Um, and my daughter, my youngest suffered, um, had a concussion and we were at the concussion clinic um, weekly for months and there was the nicest volunteer. He was at the door when you came in to kind of tell people where they needed to go. Another thing is to look for the assisted living center. Sometimes they need help with people coming to um, read to individuals who can no longer see well enough to read or play games with them. Or um, I know the women uh, used to love when I would go in and um, paint their nails for them and their toenails um, or uh, they kind of massage their feet, you know, and paint their nails, just kind of that, that tender care. Um, and so that was, that was such a joy. And some of the stories they would they'd share, they just needed someone to, to listen and they get sometimes a little lonely. So um, going to the assisted living center, um, sometimes even putting together, if you are uh, musically talent, talented, you could go and, and sing or perform for them, get your family together and friends together and uh, do something like that. And um, also sometimes I need things like, um, I saw there's, I think it's just justserve.org um, on there once that one of them needed bibs, more bibs. And so they have the pattern so you could sew bibs. Um, they're kind of really quite large, you know, and it's a little bit harder to find these larger bibs. I mean, maybe not with Amazon, but um, nowadays, but they would ask people to, um, Kind of sew these bibs for them and so uh, that was another thing if you're good at sewing and then there's also on this website um refu refu refugee sorry i can't talk refugee kids um that uh, you can help put together and it just has a list of things that um all over that uh, so you can check that out from wherever you're at and see if there's anything local uh, that you can help out with. I've loved as a member of the Washington County Board of Realtors, uh, we have a committee that's dedicated to serving in the community. And every year, um, a variety of nonprofits would come in and kind of present like why they would like the money raised from our upcoming uh, golf tournament and how it would bless them, how, would they, how they would use it. And um, it was so cool seeing all these different ones. So I hope you know there are so many more places you can volunteer beyond what I'm talking about today. And if you're local, I'd love to hear um, places you volunteered or know of that I haven't mentioned. Put those in the comments below. 
And um, so anyway, we would raise money for the, uh, some of these, some of them that maybe weren't picked for the big fundraiser. Uh, we find ways throughout the year to help them, um, whether that was going to their place to put things together or different drives throughout the year. Um, that's how we ended up doing like Youth Futures I mentioned earlier, where we did a donation of towels and, and gift cards. And um, so yeah, there's just different, I love being a part of that. We've done cleanups, uh, the every Christmas for Salvation Army, we go ring the bell at the grocery stores. Uh, we've done a lot of um, drives, gathering school supplies uh, for the children. And so it's fun to be part of a group that's looking for ways to give back. And, um, and my brokerage did like Christmas for some families and had the tree with the different individuals, um, the children and their ages. And that was fun to take my kids and go shopping um, and buy gifts uh, for these children and wrap them up. So there's so many ways to kind of serve without even being part of an organization as well. It's amazing what uh, a kind word can do, opening a door for, for someone, seeing someone, you know, struggling with their, their groceries or their bags and just, uh, you know, kind of lending a helping hand, um, noticing in your neighborhood, somebody who maybe their yard is overcome with weeds and they, they need help with that. They've got other things that are more pressing um, or physically they can't do it. And so helping a neighbor with yard work or watching someone's children or bringing them food or, or just a treat, letting them know that you're thinking of them. And so um, I'd encourage you to just try to look outside of yourself and help those around you. It's, it's such a huge blessing. Um, and I feel like a lot of people uh, do that in this area. That's one of the things that I love about living here is how um, people look out for each other. And I've been blessed to be on the receiving end many times in my life. And um, I'm always grateful for that and the opportunities that come my way to serve. I would love to hear how you serve in your community. Leave that in the comments below and I will talk to you soon.